Hey everyone, this is Zach with 8020 Media here today with a video on horsepower versus torque. Horsepower and torque are numbers that are frequently advertised and thrown around in the automotive world. It's very common to see them on spec sheets, mentioned constantly throughout car reviews. It's something that a lot of people, when they go buy a new car, horsepower and torque are two of those numbers that really come to mind and people like to advertise and talk about and say, oh, I picked up my new Ford Mustang with 480 horsepower. So very talked about numbers, but ultimately a lot of us understand the basics of horsepower and torque in that a bigger number is better and generally all else equal. More power and more torque is going to result in a faster car. While that is true, there are a lot of other nuances when it comes to horsepower and torque. Is one better than the other? What what do horsepower and torque actually measure and more throughout this video i'll cover those topics as well as jump into a couple other fun points and conversations about horsepower and torque so with that said let's go ahead and jump in to the first topic what is torque torque is simply the rotational equivalent of a linear force so rather than a force being applied in a straightforward or backwards motion torque refers to the actual twisting force exerted on the crankshaft in an internal combustion engine ultimately Internal combustion engines create torque by driving the pistons downwards in the cylinder, which is connected to the connecting rod and ultimately the crankshaft. So basically the force of the piston is pushing on the connecting rod, which in turn turns the crankshaft of the vehicle. And that is ultimately what you are measuring with torque is how much twisting force is actually being applied to the crankshaft of the vehicle. Now that applies if you do an actual engine dyno, if you go to a chassis dyno that most of us would go to, if you just take your car to one. In that case, it's reading wheel torque or torque to the rear wheels, which is the rotational force not only applied to the crankshaft, but the actual force that makes it from the crankshaft through the transmission, the drivetrain, back to the differential, and ultimately to the rear wheels or all wheels, depending on what the configuration of the vehicle is. In the US, when we talk about torque numbers, it's often abbreviated as pound slash feet or LB dash FT. However, the actual correct term is foot pounds. And so if you talk about a car, the correct term would be a car has say, for example, 500 foot pounds of torque. And when it comes to the international system is Newton meters or NM for short as a measure of the torque number of an engine. In summary of all that, what torque basically is, is it's the ability to do work. It's the ability of the piston to drive downwards and turn the crankshaft in a rotational motion. That rotational motion, the force applied to that is torque. Moving on to the next topic, what is horsepower? Horsepower is simply a unit of measure for power. Horsepower is the rate at which work is done. So this takes things a step further from torque, which is again, the ability to do work. So unlike torque, where it's just taking that rotational force, Horsepower also puts a timestamp on it in a way, and it looks at it over a greater period of time. I'll circle back to that in a moment with a pretty simple basic equation for horsepower and torque. Here in the US, we refer to it as horsepower or HP for short. On the other hand, the international system use kilowatts or KW for short. So how are horsepower and torque related? Ultimately, horsepower cannot exist without torque in an internal combustion engine. Again, torque is the ability ability to do work. So if an engine did not have any ability to do work, then it could not possibly create any horsepower. And that is shown in the equation horsepower equals torque times RPM, the revolutions per minute, divided by 5,252. So as a quick side note there, at 5,252 RPMs, your horsepower and torque in the engine will always be equal to each other. So if you're making 500 horsepower at 5,252 RPMs, that means that you are also making 500 foot-pounds of torque. So ultimately tying that equation back into what I talked about with what is horsepower and what is torque, first and foremost, that is what the engine is creating with that rotational force exerted on the crankshaft torque and then you have the revolutions per minute of the vehicle and that's what adds in the timestamp to essentially be able to calculate your horsepower those revolutions per minute are telling you how often the torque can be applied to the crankshaft and ultimately that's how you're then able to calculate horsepower is now you have how much force is being created essentially in your torque and then with revolutions per minute you're saying how many times in a given minute can you actually make that force 
hours, and that all ties back into power, which is again the rate at which work is done. Tying that all together, which one is better than horsepower or torque? Now there is a common saying in the automotive world and something that is commonly thrown around with horsepower and torque, and that is that torque is what gets you going and horsepower is what lets you go fast. Generally, this is true to many extents. Based on the equation with horsepower and torque, the more torque you make for getting off the line, for example, the more power you're making, and ultimately that means that you are doing work or accelerating at a faster rate. And so that is very true that torque can help you get off the line faster, and ultimately it's horsepower that allows you to go fast. Above 5252 RPMs, you will always be making more horsepower than torque. And on the contrary, below 5252 RPMs, you will always be making more torque than you are making horsepower. And so based on that, it makes sense that generally higher in the RPM range is where you're going to see the biggest horsepower numbers. And a lot of the times, internal combustion engines produce their peak torque somewhere in the mid-range of the RPM band. Speaking of, torque is what gets you going and horsepower is what lets you go fast. It's not always a perfect saying when it comes to understanding power and torque. When you look at horsepower and torque numbers, especially as advertised on a spec sheet, when they say a car makes 500 horsepower and 400 pound-feet of torque, or whatever the numbers may be, that is the peak number at generally one very specific RPM. And so just looking at the peak numbers for horsepower and torque really don't even paint the full picture of horsepower versus torque and which one is more important. And that leads me into one of my final points here in this video about comparing horsepower versus torque. And that is what's really most important is the entire power band of the engine as well as the torque curve of the engine since that will give you the full picture rather than just a, a little blip at one point on a dyno sheet or what the car makes at its maximum output. Ultimately, the entire power band and torque curve is more important than just the peak horsepower or torque numbers that you are making. So for that, I threw together a quick example dyno sheet of two different cars using the equation that I talked about, horsepower equals torque times RPM divided by 5252. Both vehicles make a peak of 605 horsepower and 565 foot-pounds of torque. So they both have the exact same peak numbers, and as they were advertised on a spec sheet, you would see the same exact numbers for both vehicles. However, with the dyno chart that I made here, I gave car number one an advantage throughout most of the RPM band, so it reaches its peak torque a little bit faster and holds its torque throughout the rev range a little bit better, and ultimately that leads to an overall better power band and torque curve for car number one, and so in this case, assuming all else is equal, car number one is actually going to be the faster vehicle, again, assuming all else is equal, same gearing, same car, aerodynamics, transmission, etc., because it has the better overall power band, despite the fact that both of these engines would make the same exact peak power and peak torque. So just one fun example to kind of explain some of the nuances with horsepower and torque and which one is really more important. It's really impossible to say just looking at one single number on a sheet of paper without actually dynoing the engine or the vehicle and seeing the entire power band. It's really hard to gauge what that horsepower or torque number actually means. If you only make that power for a very brief second and then it starts dropping off quickly, then that's not quite as good as a car that could make its peak power number and hold that pretty consistently and steady throughout a lot of the top end of the rev range. And the same thing can be said for torque, looking at more of the mid-range again where, where engines tend to peak in torque. You really have to see the full picture to understand horsepower and torque and what that ultimately means for vehicle performance and acceleration. Anyway guys, that wraps up our video for today. If you appreciated the content, please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and check out the description below for more. Thanks everyone.